Salutations everybody, it is Maddie here today discussing the review process for Borderlands 3. Now, first and foremost, no one's reviews are being broken down, attacked, picked apart, but more so what I want to do in this video is highlight what I believe is an ongoing issue in the games industry that plagues not only creators but mostly consumers and it deeply impacts their day one purchasing decision when reviews go live. This is a video topic that's been stirring around in my head for a good number of days. I feel I've fully developed my thoughts on the topic and I'm ready to deliver them properly to you guys. So. Let's get started with how this discussion spawned, which was when I headed over to the Metacritic page and saw that the scores had quite a massive difference. If you look right now on Metacritic, you'll see that Borderlands 3 currently has an 85 from 22 critics. Meanwhile, the user score is considerably lower with 1,487 reviews, ranking it at a 5.2. The reason for this is because while Borderlands 3 is an extremely fun video game, it has been plagued with a ton of issues upon launch and a lot of people feel that the actual reviews from critics have not properly represented what this game actually is, which is fun but technically marred. So let's get into some of those technical issues and I'll start to get into my very point of how I feel this review process is flawed. And while some of it does come on the end of the reviewers who are handed codes, it's also 2K in how they distributed codes. So let's keep going. For starters, there was the Borderlands 3 save data issue where PC players were reporting that they lost their save data. Fortunately, this one was actually very quickly addressed within a number of hours where Borderlands 3 received a hot fix for the cloud save issue, but sadly, there were some problems that still persisted despite that. Also, if you were one of the people, one of my viewers actually contacted and told me this, they had lost their save file, your progress is not recoverable. So you can waste a lot of your time in Borderlands 3 and not get any of that progress back. Fortunately, like I said, this was an issue that was fixed pretty quickly, but there's a lot of still ongoing issues of Borderlands 3. So let's focus on the ones that are currently sticking about. Co-op in Borderlands 3 has always been important to a lot of people. It's one of the few games that supports split-screen co-op, and it is reportedly a mess where it barely functions. It hardly runs well. And as someone who's been playing online co-op for the most of their Borderlands 3 playthrough, I can personally attest to the fact that co-op in general just does not work as well as previous Borderlands iterations. And that's because I think 3 has a lot more going on underneath the hood. And I know co-op online is different from split screen, but just all I'm saying is co-op in general has not functioned well for Borderlands 3. While split screen is messy, I can speak personally more to the online aspect where latency is a consistent issue, menus, hardly ever load, quest markers are continuously bugged, and the list goes on. What's interesting though is that Polygon had a write-up when their review went live multiple days before this game came out. And some of the issues that I just mentioned were mentioned in their review as well. And I thought this was interesting because it'll get to my official point, which is gonna be the majority of the talking point for this video. So let's read how they handled some of the technical issues that were slung their way during the review process. They, being 2K, asked us to stay away from the DirectX 12 implementation, for example, and told us that our progress in these builds may or may not carry over to the final game. We experienced some serious issues. The game crashed frequently, and those crashes were experienced separately by three Polygon staffers playing on three different gaming PCs in different parts of the country. One of us lost a character after putting six hours into the game and had to start from scratch. After a day or two of playing, random crashes became something I expected, not anything that surprised me, and they got worse as we went through the game. Quests would glitch out, waypoints would refuse to show up until the game was restarted, a pop-up window randomly gave me instructions about what to do if a mission-critical vehicle was blown up, or if I got stuck at a level, even though nothing of that sort was happening. I guess someone on the team expected that to be an issue, but it wasn't. Crashes, poor performance, still something that plagues the PC player base. I just mentioned quest bugs. I actually just playing this last night, experienced this and had to leave the game, come back in. There have been audio bugs when playing online. Sometimes the echo cast doesn't go through and then in turn the subtitles don't register so you can miss very big chunks of the story like I personally have. It has been a slew of technical problems. And like I said, the reason I think a lot of people are more willing to forgive it is because Underneath the surface of all of this is a very fun video game. I'll say this much, the story I'm about halfway through hasn't really grabbed me at all, but the game itself is so fun to play, which is why it becomes all the more frustrating that it's there. 
But what of this review process that I'm talking about? Where's the issue there? It's very clear if you couldn't tell by the way that Borderlands 3 reviews were handled and how few were out when the embargo lifted is that 2K specifically selected different outlets for reviews and very minimal amounts of YouTubers received a copy. Now often when a YouTuber talks about this, it's an instant jump to envy, jealousy, a desire to be in those shoes and have the review copy. I don't care, my content did fine for my own standards, even though I got the game just at the same time as everyone else did. I make or break my own success. I don't let an early game define that for me. That's just how this industry rolls. But what's happening here is that 2K and Gearbox were clearly very aware of the technical state of this game. And so when they start handpicking outlets and giving very minimal codes out to a game where they were not very shy to give opportunities for people to play at E3, the May event where we all traveled out to Hollywood to play Borderlands 3 at the reveal, and of course the event back in August to test it a little bit more. They were not hesitant for that, but when it came to the actual review codes, it instantly whoop, shrunk down. Now, one thing I did mention when I was playing Borderlands 3 back in August is that there were some issues on the PC. I noted some FPS drops that didn't run as smooth, and this was something that I feel a lot of people ignored. I personally wasn't surprised by some of the technical issues that plagued that platform because I saw it clear as day when I was playing the preview. Maybe word didn't spread, that's not me saying I told you so, but there was just a lack of surprise there. And so when I started to see that review copies were not going out into the wind, I was like, man, really? This is kind of crazy because it doesn't bestow confidence in the product when you're starting to shield it from the very people who promote and influence that very product. Something about that has always thrown people off. Borderlands 3 is one of many games that have been on the receiving end of review codes like that. Normally what happens during the review process is you'll receive an email, they'll ask if you're interested in a code, you'll agree, you sign an NDA, you receive your game code, but the way that they did it here were it was a very selectful process, no matter what success you ever found with the game, however much traction you gained in the community, it did not matter. They were very picky about it and it's because they were trying to hide some of the issues as much as possible. So most of the discussion seemed to be about how it was more Borderlands, which is fine. Borderlands 3 is a very fun game because the formula that worked in previous games is very much apparent in this game and evolved upon in a small amount of ways, which I think will be an ongoing discussion for this game down the line. Right now it's a lot of fun, but as it ages, I'm curious to see if people are gonna have that desire and wishes that maybe Gearbox took a couple more chances with this game because a lot of the framework and gameplay loop is very familiar and that's kind of good because it's fun, but also is it gonna be something that people get tired of because they've done it for years already with Borderlands 2 and then Game of the Year Edition for one? But circling back to the review process, we're getting a little off topic here. When you look at the bugs that currently plague the game, the bugs that were very impactful during the review process, and then the very high review scores, something doesn't add up. Something's really strange there. And like I said, this is something that happens for a lot of games. And it's really unfortunate that Borderlands 3 finally getting out the gate, it's a really fun title, has yet another stumbling block to overcome. It feels like it's been issue after issue for this game. I know some people will look at the video and go, oh, he's just a YouTuber, he just wants access to the game, he's pissed off, he's trying to vent his frustrations out in this video in a different way. No, look, like, yeah, I'll say first and foremost, it can get a little frustrating when you don't get a code because when you see like 20 people are handpicked to get it and they have all their guides, builds, reviews, gameplay, everything ready and good to go. It sort of eliminates the competition instantly because they have such exclusive access to that title that it diminishes my desire to create in that field because it's already so oversaturated and also because everyone has such a gigantic head start. Like I said though, I believe I make or break my own success with the help of you guys. And so for me personally, that does not bother me. It's just the reality of this job. No one's forcing me to do this. I do it because I enjoy it, but at the end of the day, it's just very shady what's going on with this review process and I, I couldn't bite my tongue on it any longer. It, but anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that'll wrap it up. I do appreciate you taking the time to watch this far if you have, because I think this is a very important issue in the games industry that does not receive a lot of attention because I think a lot of people get afraid that they're gonna lose access to review codes or lose contact with different sources within the industry. But at the end of the day, man, 
for this industry to improve, you got to tackle these issues, I feel. And I'm not acting like I'm someone dying on the cross here. Don't get me wrong. I'm just saying I've always talked about what I believe in, and I just believe that this process was very wrong. It did not sit with me well. And so I wanted to share that, and I appreciate you taking the time to watch this with an open mind and hear what I had to say. It really means the world to me. So thank you guys so much. I really appreciate you. Let me know what you think about the review process of Borderlands 3 in the comments down below. Other than that, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram. Those links are in the description down below, along with my Patreon. Do consider supporting that as it fuels all the content I create here. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.